All right, this is lesson two of unit one. We're going to be looking at linearity, intercepts, and symmetry. This lesson is going to help you determine the linearity, intercepts, and symmetry of functions. So as we look at linearity, what does linearity mean? A linear function is a function in which a variable is only raised to the power of one. So that means we have an x and there's no exponent attached to the x. y equals uh, x. All linear functions can be written in the form y equals mx plus b, and their graphs make straight lines. All right, so all linear functions, we can use that formula where we have a slope in front of the x plus a y-intercept in b. So m is slope, and b is our y-intercept. Hopefully that's just a refresher, and you remember that from Algebra 1. Okay, so example 1, linear or nonlinear? f of x equals 2x minus 6 over 3. Um, we can write that as f of x, we can change that to y. y equals, uh, we can distribute that uh, over 3 to both the, the first and the second thing, so we can distribute the that to 2 thirds x and then negative 6 over 3. Well, negative 6 over 3, well, we can rewrite that. Negative 6 over 3 is the same thing as negative 2. So that's the same thing as 2 thirds x minus 2. And looky there, I've got a slope of 2 thirds, a y intercept of negative 2. So this is linear. Now, Letter B here, 4y equals 4 minus 3x cubed. Now notice I have an x cubed here. It's not an x to the first power, I have an x cubed. And my first rule says that uh, the x is only raised to the power of 1. So therefore, this is not, or we'll, we'll say non-linear. Non-linear. C, y equals 9. y equals 9 is a constant function. y equals 9, it, uh, it's the same thing as y equals 0 times x plus 9. Right? 0, not ox, 0 times x plus 9. 0 times x, that just gets rid of the x, and then 9 is our y-intercept. So this is a constant line, horizontal line, uh, but it is linear. All right. So let's look at intercepts. We have two different types of intercepts we're going to look at. We have an x-intercept and we have a y-intercept. Sorry about that. They're testing the bells out. X-intercept, the x-coordinate of a point where the graph crosses the x-axis and the y is zero. So y is 0. The y-intercept the is the, the y-coordinate of a point where the graph crosses the y-axis. So the x would be 0. And these are always going to be written as points uh, in the coordinate pair x, comma, y. So we're going to find the x and y-intercepts of the following functions algebraically. Now the easiest way to do that is to plug 0 in for each one independently. So we'll have two different cases. One where we're looking for the x-intercept, so we make y be 0, so 2 times 0 minus 3x equals 6. And then we'll do a, another case where we make the x be 0, so that would be 2y minus 3 times 0 equals 6. So we're going to treat these completely separate. They don't, don't interact. All right, 2 times 0 is 0, so that leaves us with just negative 3x equals 6. And then we just divide both sides by negative 3. And I get that x is negative 2. So when y is 0, x is negative 2. And then I can, negative 3 times 0 is 0, so 2y equals 6, divide both sides by 2, and we get that y is 3. So this x-intercept, or sorry, y-intercept, 
is at the point 0, comma, 3. So just plug 0 in for both of those. So this is our x-intercept. And this is our y-intercept. Again, to find the x-intercept, you plug 0 in for y. To find the y-intercept, you plug 0 in for x. So it's like the opposite. So 3 times 0 plus 4y equals 9. If I make my x be 0, that's going to be my y-intercept. 3 times 0 is 0, so that's 4y equals 9. Divide both sides by 4. Some of you all are thinking, whoa, why 9 divided by 4 doesn't work. Well, just leave it as a fraction. Fractions are great. Fractions are awesome. y equals 9 fourths. That works great. If you are a decimal person, that's fine. You could put it as 2.25. I'll only shame you a little bit. Just kidding. No shame. Now, let's look at the x-intercept. Let's make our y be 0. So 3x plus 4 times 0 equals 9. 4 times 0 is 0, so just 3x equals 9. Divide both sides by 3, and I get that x is 3. So this is 0, 9 fourths for my y-intercept. This is 3, 0 for my x-intercept. So that's the easy way to find the x and y intercepts for a linear function. Now, you can also find the x and y intercepts of a linear function using a graph. x and y intercepts of this first one, we have an intercept right there, and we have an intercept right there. Now we need to know which one is the x-intercept and which one is the y-intercept. The x-intercept, of course, is the one that crosses the x-axis. The y-intercept is the one that crosses the y-axis. Y goes up and down, x goes left to right. So this would be the x-intercept. This would be the y-intercept. So the x-intercept is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, negative 7, comma, 0. And the y-intercept, it looks like it's up 2, so that's at 0, comma, 2. Now, this, you can tell, is a straight line all the way across, so this is linear. Now let's move on to B. B has a couple of x-intercepts. Here's the deal, though. A function will never, ever, ever have more than one y-intercept. If it is a function... It will always have only one y-intercept. So here are some intercepts. We've got one there. We've got one, sorry, that was at negative 3, 0. We've got one at 0, negative 2. I've got one at 2, 0, and I've got one at 5, 0. So x-intercepts, I've got negative 3, comma, 0. I've got 2, comma, 0. And I've got 5, comma, 0. So all of those are written as ordered pairs. I don't just write negative 3, 2, 5. I write them as ordered pairs. The y-intercept is 0, comma, negative 2. Never will I ever have more than one y-intercept on a function. Obviously, this is not a linear function. You can look at it. It is not a straight line. So it is nonlinear. Look at the graph. It's a squiggly line. Definitely not linear. All right, so don't circle linear there. Symmetry. Line of symmetry, axis of symmetry, is where we have the graph reflected over a vertical line so that the two halves are identical. We do not care so much about a horizontal line of symmetry. We only, or a diagonal line of symmetry, I don't want that, I don't care about that. I only care about a vertical line of symmetry. So, is there a vertical line of symmetry on example 4a? Well, yeah. It goes right through the middle here. Each half is the same, left and right, so that is symmetrical. Letter B here. 
Is there a line of symmetry? Well, yeah, of course. It goes right through there, right through the vertex. And it is symmetrical. If you flip it over that line, it would be a mirror image of itself. Now, letter C. There is no way I can do a line of symmetry here. So if I, even if I wanted to go horizontal, I couldn't, right? Because of this corner right here that is missing. So um, there is no line of symmetry. So let's look at the line or axis of symmetry and some key features. So the axis of symmetry, where it goes through. So a, a quadratic, a parabola, has a line of symmetry that goes through its vertex, that's low point or high point. So what is the x value of that point? Well, the x value of that point is 0. So what we're going to say is x equals 0. That is our axis of symmetry, x equals 0. It is a vertical line that goes up and down through all x's where x is 0. I'm sorry, through all y's where x is 0. Now let's look at the x-intercepts. There's one there, and there's one there, and that looks it's at, like it's at negative 2 comma 0, and it looks like it is at positive 2 comma 0. Now if you notice, a, the x-intercepts of a quadratic are either going to be the vertex or they will be, or sorry, they will be the vertex or they will be equal distance from the axis of symmetry itself. So it's always going to be the same number of steps away from the axis of symmetry, the left x-intercept and the y-x-intercept. There are some parabolas where there are no x-intercepts, of course. But if there are x-intercepts, they will always be the same distance away from the axis of symmetry on either side. This one happens to be two units away. Now let's look at the y-intercept. The y-intercept on this one happens to be the vertex. It is at 0, comma, what is that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Let's see here. Well, it looks like it's at 4. Yeah, 4. So that is at um, 0, 4. Now, is this a function? Yeah, it passes the vertical line test. So that's a function. The domain? Well, it's a quadratic, so we're just going to assume the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. The range. Well, the range is, is always going to be defined by the vertex of a quadratic. This vertex is at uh, negative 4. I don't know why I didn't put that negative up there with the y-intercept earlier. The range starts at negative 4, and it is defined there, so it is included. So we'll use a bracket, and it goes up to positive infinity. All right, let's look at this next one. Axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. So it goes through that turnaround point. So it is at negative 2. x equals negative 2. The x-intercepts are at negative 4 and at 0, 0. So negative 4, 0 and 0, 0. And both of those are two units away from negative 2. And then we'll look at the y-intercept. The y-intercept is also at 0, 0. Anytime one of your x-intercepts is 0, 0, that will also be your y-intercept. Is this a function? Yes, it passes the vertical line test, so it is a function. The domain. Again, all quadratics, negative infinity to positive infinity is the domain. In the range, we start at the bottom. So it goes down to negative infinity, and it goes up to positive 4. And it is defined at 4, so we have a bracket. All right, that's it for day two of the notes. Give me a, a shout out if you need any help. If not, I will see you in class.